Hello, I'm Stefan Greber, I'm project leader for LexD. And last week we went over the use of TPM devices inside of LexD, both in containers and virtual machines. And this week, continuing on with a, another reasonably straightforward device to use uh, within LexD, which is the USB device. Uh, this is similarly supported with both uh, containers and virtual machines, though it works slightly differently. For containers, uh, what this does is it passes only the kernel slash dev bus USB devices, also known as libUSB. Uh, so only that is passed into into a containers. Uh, that means it that this works great with anything that um, has a user space driver. So you can think of that things like uh, smart cards, some of amount of devices like uh, game controllers and the like. It also works yeah, with, with a number of those kind of devices that don't have dedicated kernel drivers. For anything that has a dedicated kernel driver, you're going to instead end up with um, a Unix character device, which is then much better handled in, let's like, say, using either a Unix char device or a Unix hot plug device, as uh, was covered in another, another video. Uh, for VMs, it's a bit different. Uh, for VMs, when you pass in a USB device, it passes it it passes the entire USB device to the virtual machine, and that shows up as a USB device on the USB bus of that VM, and so that will work with any device effectively. Uh, the the main kind of limitation you might have is in with some of the ways we have of passing those devices, you probably don't want to pass something too high throughput. Uh, or something that requires super low latency, uh, as that that might um, be if we are with virtual machines. And that's pretty much it. Uh, as far as options that you get in the container case, you get to choose the UID, GID, and mode of the device as it would show up, with the default being uh, that it owns, it's owned by root, but anyone can, uh, well, no, actually only root can, can access the device. So you can be more permissive than that by setting the UID, GID, or changing the mode. Uh, for VMs, you don't have any such thing because it just shows up on the USB bus. So whoever in the VM is is allowed to interact with the USB bus gets access to the device. There's also a config key uh, set as required. So by default, USB devices are not required, meaning the instance will happily start even if they're not present. Uh, but you can change that behavior with the required key. All right, so let's just go and take a quick look at how that all looks like. I'm just going to use my screen here All right, and switch over to a terminal. There we go. Okay, so what I have here is two instances running, a container and a virtual machine. And for this demo, uh, the domain device I've got connected to my desktop machine right now that I can easily pass in and out of, of uh, containers and virtual machine is a YubiKey. Uh, you might remember it from the Unix uh, char Unix hot plug device uh, that I showed earlier. So here in my uh, USB list, we can see it here. It's currently attached to as a device 65 on bus five. And we've got here the vendor ID and product ID. So vendor ID is 1050, product ID is 0406. Now, if I want to add that to the container, what I will do is do device add, name of the container, just C1, some device name, let's call that UB, and then USB is the device type, and I need the window ID, which is 1050, and the product ID, which is 0406. If I do that, then going inside the container, we'll find the bus USB 565, which matches the host uh, location for the device, and the device node is there and can be used. All right, so that's the container case. I could now install the YubiKey tools and show that this all works, but it's a normal USB device. It would just it would work just fine. Now for the more interesting use case, which are VMs, I'm gonna first remove it from the container because in the case of VMs, it actually gets disconnected from the whole system. So you don't you can't share it with multiple VMs or with other containers on the system. It needs to be just given to one VM. And then I'm gonna go here and use the exact same command, but this time with V1 for the VM. And if we go inside of the VM, look at the USB bus here. You can see there's a single USB device connected right now, which is the UBK. Uh, and it shows up with a different bus and device ID in the case of the VM because it's its own USB bus. And so it doesn't necessarily line up with what you have on the host system. 
uh, if we look at the message we should see a perfectly normal hot plug event here showing that the device showed up it's got an hid dev uh, driver that's automatically loaded and just works as you would expect all right and i'm going to be removing it uh, from the vm as well and i'm going to show a third way we've got of passing devices uh, into a vm and for that i'm just going to be using a windows virtual machine so if we look here this is a windows 11 vm just gonna log in yeah so right now i don't have any um it would it would show but as like a security smart card or something like that there's currently none listed here what i can do um but won't, it suddenly won't really show up on the recording because it's a separate window but i can click that icon up here um and when i do that and well, actually wrong icon the middle one here <laughs> all right uh, what you can't see, but you've just seen the, the you've seen the window dim. What you can't see is that I'm being presented a list of all the USB devices on my system, and I can select the UB key on that and hit close, and we see then on Windows it refreshes and it just showed that there's now a smart card reader got plugged in and a smart card has been added. That's the UB key. Now if I click on the icon again, and I untick the UB key, this is gonna cause a hot remove of the usb device and it just disappears what's interesting very interesting in this case is that um, it achieves the same it will attach the usb device to your vm the the funny thing now is that it does that over the remote vm protocol spice in this case which means you get to share any usb device you have on your machine regardless of where the virtual machine is running so in this case, it was running on my system. So yeah, it, no, no, nothing weird there. But I could have run that VM uh, on a different machine in a different room or even different continent. And I could have shared my local USB device with that remote VM uh, using the, the remote machine protocol, uh, in this case, Spice. This works really well, but that's a case where uh, throughput and latency should definitely be a concern because you're effectively sending USB data over the internet uh, through Lexi's API. And so if you've got a reasonably high latency or inconsistent latency to whatever machine is running the Lexi VM, well, your USB device is gonna suffer from that. So you definitely don't want to share a webcam, a microphone or anything like that, which mostly relies on real-time-ish um, behavior. Uh, but it would work fine for some other USB devices, whether it's some kind of scientific equipment, measurements, probe, that kind of stuff. And that's really it for the USB devices in Lexi. It's another pretty easy one, as mentioned, uh, but works pretty seamlessly with hot plug support, both in containers and virtual machines, uh, as was shown here. Um, can be pretty flexible, especially in the VM case, because you can pass devices that are on your Linux system that don't have a Linux driver. You can pass that to, say, a Windows VM, and then it will, it will let you use the driver inside of the VM just fine. And the um, the remote VM through Spice is a pretty nice party trick, if, anything, if nothing else. Uh, I personally use it sometimes to run Windows VMs uh, on beefier servers uh, away from home. Uh, and then still being able to connect them to random devices that I might need to update a firmware on or something like that. So I can just connect a random USB device to my laptop, send share that device remotely with the VM running wherever I want, and then run the Windows update software, whatever I need to update that device and then just unplug it. That works pretty well. It's very convenient sometimes and definitely a nice thing for Lexi's support. So if you've got any questions around USB devices, feel free to leave them below or on the community forum. I'll have the documentation page linked in the description. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.